Today's video is about the rise of political parties. Political parties are also referred to as factions. That's what they called them back then. So faction, political party, same difference. Um, they mean the same exact thing. The two factions that began in the 1790s and into the early 1800s were called the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans. The Federalists were led by Alexander Hamilton. The Democratic Republicans, or just Republicans for short, were led by Thomas Jefferson. Do not get the Republicans confused with today's Republicans, two completely different parties. So how did these parties start and what did people think about them back then? Well, first of all, people really didn't want to have political parties. Political parties were feared by both Federalists and Democratic Republicans alike. Politicians thought that they'd make the country tear apart and everyone would be angry at each other, and they were kind of right, and no one wants to look like that guy being all angry. Thomas Jefferson even went so far to say that if he could not go to heaven but with a political party, he would not want to go there at all. That's pretty strong language against political parties. Despite everyone not liking these parties, well, they happened anyway. The first thing that started these parties to form was the Constitution. As you've already learned, there was two different ways to look at what the Constitution allowed the government to do. First of all, there was what was called strict interpretation, and that was the Democratic-Republican way. You only do what the Constitution says. This was already learned uh, in our previous topic with the National Bank, because the Constitution did not say there could be a bank, well, the Democratic Republicans didn't think it was illegal to do so. That's a strict interpretation. You only do what it says. The opposite point of view, or the point of view of the Federalists, was loose interpretation. That means that the Constitution is not set in stone. It can be read in multiple ways, and it gives the government more, powerful, more power to do different things. This is where the interpretation of things like the Necessary and Proper Clause come into play. Hamilton and the Federalists liked this, and they thought that the Constitution should be read loosely, not strictly. Another difference between the two political parties is who should be involved and who should make the choices. The Federalists, well, they felt people like this should make the choices. This is a fancy aristocrat. He's quite wealthy, as you can tell, and he looks pretty smart, don't you think? Well, Federalists believe that power should be with the wealthy and educated people. They should be the ones that vote. They should be the ones that participate in government. And the people that aren't wealthy and aren't educated, well, they don't, they don't know how to make good choices, so they shouldn't be included. So if the Federalists were around, this would be the type of person that would be in government. The Democratic Republicans, or just Republicans, they, they thought differently. They thought that all people, even poor and uneducated, should be able to participate in government and have a vote. Here is a dramatic farmer. I think he's planted up for the camera, pretending he's poor, but you get the, the picture. The difference between the wealthy and educated people being in charge versus the poor and everyone having a say. So the Republicans were definitely more inclusive of having the people have the power. The Federalists, they believed in a very, very strong national government. As you could see from their um, loose interpretation, by loosely interpreting the Constitution, you give the national government more power. The criticism was, of course, that that was kind of like a monarchy, which they already overthrew before. The Republicans, they were in favor of state government having the power. The criticism against that, of course, was that we already had a government where the states had the power, the Articles of Confederation, and things like Shays' Rebellion and other problems existed. So neither side had a perfect argument. Another really, really big issue between the two sides was who to support, England or France. England and France are, were at war with each other, and they pretty much are at war with each other for the duration of our um, learning this year. They're always at war, England and France. England wanted us to support them, and France wanted us to support them, and they both had good reasons why. First of all, 90% of our trade happens with England. 90% of the goods that, that we produce in America back then go to England, and 90% of the imports coming in from other countries came from England. So England had close economic ties to us, and it made sense financially for us to support England. France, on the other hand, helped support us when we went to war against England. So they thought that we owed them a favor, and that we should support them in the war against England. 
course, Federalists, they would support England because they were the ones doing the trading, the shipping, all the different money type stuff. So they didn't want to make England mad and go to war with them because they'd lose all their business. Republicans, they supported France. They had no reason to support England. They didn't make money off trade with them. And they believed that since we fought against England and France helped us, then we should help them. So that was a really, really big issue. And that will continue to come up more and more as we learn more about, about this topic. Also, what was going on in France was they had a revolution of their own. They killed their king in a guillotine, as you see pictured here, Louis XIV. So they overthrew their king, just like we overthrew our king. So France really thought that we should support them in their quest to give liberty to their people. And of course, the Republicans were really big on giving liberty to the people, as you saw that the Republicans wanted to have the people have more say in government. This is a little bit of a review. Uh, we didn't call it Federalists and Republicans, but you guys already knew and know that Hamilton um, supported both the National Bank and Tariff, and he was a Federalist, and Jefferson opposed both of those things, and he was a Republican. So those are two issues, and we already kind of talked about that, so we won't spend too much time on that there. I think you can probably guess this one, too. The Federalists, being from the North, they supported factories and they wanted to support legislation and laws that would improve factories, kind of like the tariff that we already talked about. The Republicans, they were from the South and they supported increased legislation to help farming and other agricultural things. So why does this all matter? Well, factions were feared at first, even by Hamilton, Jefferson, Washington. Nobody wanted factions to start, but they happened anyway. Each faction felt differently about all the major issues. So as we go on in our unit, you're going to learn about every single different major issue that faced the country, and you can pretty much get ready for one side to think one way and one side to think the other way. The unity that existed between the states after creating the Constitution was quickly replaced by arguments between politicians, between Federalists and Democratic Republicans. And that's just a little bit about political parties. So make sure you fill out your note sheet don't forget to do that. And then when you come in on Tuesday, we're going to talk a little bit more about political parties, and I'm going to actually have you guys create a motto, a slogan, and a logo for either the Federalists or the Democratic Republicans. So be ready to do that.